Good evening, everyone. Uh, Tammy was teasing me. She said, all right, teacher, be flexible. <laughs> Get up there and teach. And so, and it, I don't think it ironic or strange that we have an unusual start considering tonight's theme, joy, okay? This is not how we would expect things to go, right? But it doesn't take anything away from the reality of why we're here and what we seek to accomplish. And that really ties in beautifully to our idea tonight, joy. So who can remember the theme from the first week of Advent? Okay, hope, right? More specifically, what kind of hope? Christian hope. We're doing a little bit of a spiral review. I gotta, I'm just who I am, right? I'm a teacher. All right? The second week of Advent, what was the theme? Peace. Peace. Because of the hope that we have in who? In Jesus. Not only that he came, but in his return, okay, we have peace in that reality, in that faith that grounds us. And because of that hope, because of that peace, we also have what? Joy. And so when you think about the word joy, just take a moment to do a little mental association. Think about and visualize the words, the word associations that begin to come up in your mind when you hear the word joy. And don't, don't speak it yet. I'm gonna give you some thinking time. And I'm just gonna keep saying the word. And as you hear me say this word, begin to visualize more and more word associations that your mind automatically comes up. These, whether it's connotations or denotations or what have you. Joy, joy, joy. Now everyone say it with me. Joy. Now, take a moment to share with the people at your table the different words that came to your mind, words or phrases, right? Short sentences that immediately sprung up in your mind and in your heart when you hear the word joy. All right? Let's start sharing with our tables. And now we circle back together. And I heard a diversity of responses from people, things, ideas, other emotions and feelings that arise. And now I'm going to just walk past each table and I'm gonna invite anyone, whoever, to just share one of the associations that sprung up in your mind when you heard the word joy. And if you have more than one person speak at one time, it's okay, all right? So anyone from this table, say it nice so the whole room can hear it. Anything that you shared that came up to mind. Elation. Hmm? Elation, Elation right? Okay, anyone from this table? Grandchildren. Grandchildren. Her grandchildren bring her joy. Anyone from this table? I agree. She agrees, right? <laughs> okay. Anyone from this table? Cooking. Cooking. No, 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 no. Say it again. Cook. Cooking. Bring cooking. Oh, I thought you said cookie. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> now, cooking brings me joy. <laughs> Both of those work. Both of those will work. There's an action. There's some acti activity that brings him joy. Anyone from this table? Children playing. And you're not the only one I heard make reference to children. All right? And anyone from this table? Inner contentment. Inner contentment. Okay? Inner contentment. Really connecting back to that piece. And all of these associations are right and they have their place. And there's, there's a few things that we're going to do tonight. One, we're going to explore the concept of Christian joy within the context of Advent. 
Then we're going to look at or identify some distinctions between joy and happiness, right? Because there's gonna be a little bit of a difference that we're gonna end up seeing in our discussion. And then finally, we're gonna have a nice little activity called Pass the Joy. And it's gonna be an exchange of experiences. As Episcopalians, we know how to pass the peace, right? And, but when you begin to think on a broader scale of Advent, think about how not only can we pass the peace, we can pass the hope, but we can also pass the joy. And so, let's go into it. When we think about joy within the context of Advent, we're really speaking about this profound and anticipatory sense of gladness. It's rooted in the belief and the expectation of the coming of Jesus Christ. Again, we celebrate, yes, we celebrate that he was born in a manger, right? Oh, little town of Bethlehem. Yes, we honor that and we celebrate that. But what we're really lifting and, and, and recognizing and drawing our hearts to is the fact that the Lord has promised that he will come again. Now, when we think about joy, we look at joy, or I invite you to see joy as a gift, okay? You know, we're, we're getting ready to open a lot of presents this weekend. And so as we unpack this gift, let's unpack the idea of Christian joy and all of what it could entail for us. So first, Christian joy, it's spiritual and heartfelt rejoicing. Right Now, within the idea of spiritual and heartfelt rejoicing, it, we are able to experience that because, and we've named this just a moment ago, the, of the hope and the peace that we have in Christ, right? And not only because of the hope and the peace that we have in Christ, but we have a spiritual and heartfelt rejoicing that's grounded in God's redemptive plan for us, right? We're not out here just wandering aimlessly, but because of God and because of the renewal and God's plan of redemption for all of mankind, that's why we are able to rejoice, have peace, and exist in hope. Another thing that we can pull out of this wonderful gift of joy is continuous reflection. What are we reflecting on? First of all, we're reflecting on the significance of the incarnation. Say that word with me, incarnation. Now, a lot of people may not know what that word particularly means, right? But when we speak of the incarnation, we are referring to the event that we often name in the Apostles' Creed and in the Nicene Creed, where the word became flesh. And that should speak so poignantly to us because what's the name of our parish? Nativity, right? So our whole parish centers and is grounded in the idea that God so loved the world that he gave his son and that his son came and took on human flesh, dwelt among us, and created this new life, this new idea, and this opportunity for a renewed mind and heart. So we reflect on that, continue, that, that significance of incarnation. We also reflect on the expectancy of his return. And we may be on varying ends of the spectrum there, and, and we may not always agree on what that's going to look like and, and, and what that will entail, but we have that expectancy and that hope that's grounded in our faith. Another thing that we unpack from joy is the idea of celebration. Now, celebration is not always this large emotional display, is it? Okay. Celebration is a reality, it's a state that we have within. And as we celebrate, we're celebrating God's love that is completely unconditional, completely unmerited, and completely unbounding. And we also celebrate our heritage of faith. 
the beliefs, the value systems, the moral fibers, even the ethics that inform our everyday lives. We celebrate those things. And last, Christian joy gives us a deep awareness. Deep awareness of what? One, it gives us a deep awareness of God's abiding presence. One beautiful hymn in the Anglican tradition is abide with me. And the hymn, if, if, if you're familiar with it, many of the lyrics, it speaks to this idea that regardless to what may be happening in life and the different experiences that may come or go, God's presence is ever constant and it's a mainstay in our lives. So we have this deep awareness of God's abiding presence and we have a deep awareness of God's eternal promises. And we know that the scriptures are filled with many promises that belong to us as believers and as a community of faith. So with this spiritual and heartfelt rejoicing, celebration, continuous reflection, and deep awareness, this is our Christian joy unpacked in the most basic way. But we want to again make distinctions between joy and happiness. Now, if we approached it from just an English or, or from a grammatical standpoint, it may seem like synonymous terms. So we're going to move from looking at it just from a linguistic standpoint or a language standpoint, and then go into more of a theological concept. So when we define joy in English, according to Webster, it's a noun. And I want to really lift that person, place, thing, or an idea, right? The emotion evoked by well-being, success, or good fortune, or by the prospect of possessing what one desires. In other words, from a pure language point, my joy is totally predicated upon what's happening around me, or that things are going the way I really want them to go. And it doesn't always happen that way. But in spite of that, we know, again, God's ever abiding presence and his eternal promises. So now that leads us then into a more theological concept that we could begin to consider. So there are two words. We have uh, samka, the Hebrew word for joy. And notice it's not a noun, it's a verb. It's something that we do. It's action, right? To rejoice, to be glad. Then, Hebrew is not the only ancient language that informs our theological context. We also have a little bit of Greek. And we have the word chara, also a verb, an action, something we do. To rejoice, to delight. And so, the invitation here in considering the distinction between joy and happiness, where we know happiness, again, being defined as a noun, that state of well-being and contentment, pleasurable or satisfying experience, but it can come and it can go. It's just like the weather and the temperature of the day. Sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. But joy, now we have the opportunity to craft a more theological definition. We understand now it's a verb, it's something that we can do, it's the act. And forgive that typo there, it's the act of rejoicing, it's the act of continuous reflection, celebration, and deep awareness, and that act is grounded in Christ. And so I can rest and participate in and engage in Christian joy even in moments of sorrow because my joy is grounded not in other emotions and feelings, which are very real. My joy is grounded in faith, which is constant. My joy is grounded in the reality that God not only came, 
but there's a promise of eternal life and there's a promise of abiding presence. Happiness, again, rests and is hinged heavily upon circumstances, right? where joy is hinged upon our faith. Happiness is an emotion, and it can trigger and prompt other emotions, and that's totally fine. However, joy will always find a way to bring us peace. I think about the scriptures where it says, a peace that goes beyond all understanding. Happiness relies on things always going my way, but things aren't always going to go my way. I may not be happy with these variable outcomes that are a part of my daily experiences, but joy is hinged upon divine promises that cannot be broken, that never fades away. And so we look at what some of those divine promises are as we wrap this up. Isaiah 12, 2 and 3. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. There are times when life leaves us completely depleted, thirsty, and barren. But because our faith is grounded in the reality that God is our salvation, and we know that our salvation came over two millennia ago, and our salvation has promised not just to abide with us still, but to come again, we're able in those thirsty moments to go back to the wells of salvation and draw from it with joy. John 15, 9 and 11, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. There's that promise that even when my joy tank seems to get a little empty, God's ever-abiding presence and his eternal promise is that where my joy puts down, his joy picks up and has a way of filling me every time. Romans 15 and 13, may the God of hope, there's that word again, fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. And then finally, Philippians 4, 4 and 5, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. Why? The Lord is near. That wonderful reminder of what we're hoping in. And so now, we take these collective thoughts and ideas and we go into our last little activity here. Pass the joy. It's going to be an exchange of experiences, testimonies of how we have had encounters with Christian joy. And... Just in case it may be difficult for you to come up with something, I have discussion prompts <laughs> with sentence stems. And so what we're going to do, we're going to have someone lead off at each table. I'm going to provide each table with the sentence stems, and these are just openings. And it basically works like this. When it's your turn or whenever you want to go, pick up the paper. You, there are four prompts there, and you can pick whichever one you feel comfortable with and you agree with. But here are the, the prompts that you can use. And if you want to add to, add to, that's fine. I encountered Christian joy when, dot, dot, dot. So we're thinking about 
when we encountered that Christian joy, maybe in someone else or in something else externally around us. Second option, I found it difficult to rejoice when, dot, dot, dot. Because again, it's easier said than done sometimes, right? <laughs> Three, something that I do that helps me to continuously reflect on God's promise and God's promise and presence is. So this is something that's a part of our routine or our devotion or whatever it may be. And these are things, external things, activities, actions, rituals, if you will, that they help us to be able to engage in that continuous reflection that we unpack from joy. And then finally, one way that I now see Christian joy differently is perhaps your lens has shifted a little bit from this brief discussion. In what way? I invite you to be able to name those things. So I'm going to put these pages here. I'll try to um, have two at each table. And we're going to give a little bit of time to have that discussion. And then in about three, four minutes, that gives everybody at least a minute to be able to talk and share. We'll come together, share openly, and then I give it back to Father Randy. All right? Either what you shared with your group or share what you heard. Okay? We, we, we honor some of the things that we've heard. And again, there's no precise order to which uh, prompt you want to use. Okay? So, anyway. Okay. 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 Um, I'll, I'm going to go through each one just because we didn't write okay. down a lot. But um, I encountered Christian joy when John said, My fellow Christians socialize or interact. Mm. Um, and Debbie said, I encountered Christian joy when my grandchildren were baptized. And I said, All baptized are no. That's Christian joy. Um, I found it difficult to rejoice when poor Valerie, my husband, just passed away. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, I find it difficult to rejoice when watching the news. There's just so yeah. much going on in the world, this country. Something that I do that helps me to continuously reflect on God's promises and presences is, for me, saying my nightly prayers. I say prayers every night before mm -hmm. I go to sleep. So, um, one way that I now see Christian joy differently is, we all agreed at our table that after your talk, we see that happiness and joy are distinct. Mm. They're not the same thing. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go to my answer. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm going to go have a two-parter. I find it difficult to rejoice when I feel unworthy of grace, mm. but I also find that I encounter Christian joy when I don't forget it. Mm -hmm. yeah, nice. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Right? Anyone else? <laughs> I'll speak for Dale. Okay. She said that she uh, has helped her continue to reflect on God's promises and presence is through reading God's Word and then. Wonderful. Wonderful. Anyone else? All right. Well, I hope all have been blessed and edified by this conversation and presentation. And I pray that each one of you go into this wonderful weekend with hope, with peace, and with joy. God bless. <laughs>